Okay, so in this video, we will give a heuristic proof of the power rule of differentiation in the case where the power n is a positive integer. So here clearly the function that we are interested in is x to the n. So f of x is x to the n. And to prove that this rule holds in the case of a positive integer power, we have to go back to square one, the definition of the derivative, which is the limit as the change in x delta x approaches zero of the change in the function, so f of x plus delta x, so this will give us x plus delta x to the n, then minus f of x, which is x to the n, divided by delta x. Now since n is a positive integer, now here we are simply therefore multiplying x plus delta x with itself n times. So we can write this out long, so x plus delta x times x plus delta x times x plus delta x dot 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 and finally the nth term x plus delta x. And again, we have to emphasize that we have exactly n terms x plus delta x multiplied together. Then of course minus x to the n. And of course all divided by the change in x delta x. The next step will be to expand out this product of n terms. And if you think about this, this will look like a bit of a mess, right? We have two terms here times these two terms. This will give us four terms, then times x plus delta x again. So there will be a lot of terms coming out of this expansion. The idea is to regroup them in how many delta x's are in each of the terms. So first, let's start with all the terms with no delta x. Well, that means that when we expand out, if we have not a single delta x, then we choose x every time we expand. So this will give us x times x times x times x n times. That's x to the n. And there is a single way of doing this, choosing x in every case. So we have a single x to the n term coming out of this. Plus, now what about the terms in the expansion having a single factor multiple of delta x? This is a bit more interesting, right? We could take this delta x, then times x times x times x and so on. So this would give us, as there are n terms, if you choose one delta x, this leaves n minus one x's. So this is x to the n minus one times delta x there's not only one way of creating this term, right? You can choose the first delta x, then all other x's. That's one of them. Or you can choose the second delta x, then all the other ones being x's. Or you could choose the third delta x, and all the other terms being x's, and so on. So you have, in total, n different delta x's to choose from. So this term shows up n times in the expansion. Then plus, well, the terms that have a multiple of delta x squared, then delta x cubed, delta x to the 4, up to delta x to the n. But all of these terms have at least a multiple of delta x squared. So think of simply regrouping these terms together and factoring out delta x squared. Then we're left with something quite complicated, but let's not worry about it for now as we're about to see in the limit, this whole term will be shrinking to zero. And of course, let's not forget, minus x to the n, and all divided by delta x. And as you're about to see, we're one step away from being done. x to the n minus x to the n cancels, and we're left with this term and this one, although here, admittedly, this is quite messy. And now, with the two remaining pieces, 
let's divide each one by delta x. So if you divide this one by delta x, and these two cancel, and you're left with n times x to the n minus 1, starting to look familiar, plus, and this is where things are interesting, delta x squared over delta x is delta x, and times the extra messy term left over. But, whatever this term is, as delta x approaches 0, then delta x approaches 0, obviously, so whatever this approaches, times something which shrinks to 0 will make the whole term approach 0. So in the limit, as there is no delta x here, and as this piece sh shrinks to 0, we are left with n times x to the n minus 1, which is what we were hoping to show, that for a positive integer, the derivative of x to the n with respect to x is n times x to the n minus 1. But again, we've only proved the, the power rule of differentiation in the case of a positive integer power. We do not have yet the machinery to prove that this rule also works for all other real powers of x, but later on, when we have a bit more machinery, we will be able to give a very short proof that this result also holds for all real powers of x.